Hello my friends, welcome again to my video channel. Today we will continue our work on the Canon TS700S. More alignment will come. There's a lot of alignment to be done. These old transceivers have a lot of alignment points. So let's start. Transmitting section. Step 8, adjustment of generator unit. Generated unit is this here with the SSB filter. There's also the FM part. We already have aligned it. So this output has to be aligned. There should be connected a vacuum tube voltmeter. Okay, I connect my scope. It's a frequency of 10.7 megahertz. There is no oscillation in the VFO part. The hetero time part gets no frequency. Channel 11, which is no Chrysler, when I go back to uh, VFO or any other Chrysler, I have a frequency, but channel 11 is without any oscillation. Mode FM and send. Now we have an output 10.7 megahertz, and this output has to be aligned for, uh, for maximum with this core here. It is T. T3 it was already maximum the amplitude should be 200 millivolt we have a 22 millivolt times 10 by the probe so we have 220 millivolt RMS that's okay in item 5 of the eighth step it is required set the mode switch to CW okay And now adjust ALC control VR2 on mix unit to minimum AL ALC. Well, VR2 is this one, this part, trim part. But how to set it to the minimum ALC? Uh, this is in the mixer unit, which, which goes to the driver and to, to the PA. Uh, so it's necessary to switch on the uh, VFO operating. I did it. And then connect the CW key, key down, and then we have an output power. And the ALC control is set that the output power is maximum, so that the VR2 on the mix unit does not influence the output power. There is no limitation. This means this pot is fully counterclockwise to the left side. And then we have the maximum uh, output power. Then we can switch off, of course, the output and when I key we see here the output of the generator unit and now in CW I just T1 and T2 for maximum these are both this and this these two filters I did it and we can see it is already maximum And this one also, it was maximum there, was no, no tampering with it. And then this output voltage, we, I can measure 246, should be the same as we have in FM, which is 220, 223. So this one in CW has to be reduced a little bit, there is a, a trim part. And then I reduce it 200. I think the same as in FM. 223. And CW. 23. Okay. 228. Okay. That's the same. Step 9. Adjustment of mixer unit. The mixer unit is this one. Fixed channel to VFO, okay. It is set to 500 to the center. Drive is also centered. And then we have to align on the hetero time board T4 of maximum. I have mode FM. We can see the output power, it is approximately 12 watt. 
this one has to be set to the maximum but it is already aligned and now on the mixer unit T1 through T6 this, this, this and this for maximum but T3 and T4, ah, ok, and here we have T3 and T4, it is fixed with wax oh, not again first I have to open it luckily these two coils I mean, you see this um, by the way, I'm supplying this transceiver in the moment with 13.8 volt from a power supply, not with line voltage. So here we, we have no AC voltage. I can take out the wax rather easily, but I see again white color. Oh no, not, not, not again, please. I have my nose plenty full. With this. Crazy white color. Okay, if this one moves easy. And this one. No, not. There's a white dot. does not move. Ah, okay, it moves. Whew. I wipe, I wipe the sweat from my forehead. The core comes out. Yes. Luckily, luckily, it was not fixed very hard as before, so we can work with it. The other cores are rather easy. To rotate this one, this one. I only have to remove this white spot, but luckily this white uh, color is only used to fix it on a spot and not the whole thread as we had before. And this one, the fourth one, okay, should be possible to rotate. To rotate with a bigger one. inside. Ah, okay. Now it breaks loose. Well, but I will uh, rotate now the whole chassis by 90 degrees so I can work in a vertical position. It's easier for me to do a, a alignment. The transceiver is in the right position now. We have access to the mix unit which is located here. We can adjust the coils, the cores. But first a short discussion about the function of this drive control. And it is not uh, described precise in the adjustment procedure. As I understand the band has to be set to 144 when starting and later. Then it is written set band switch to 145. It's for the W, for the European version. We only have two bands, 144, 145. The reason is that this drive control here controls a tuning voltage. And this tuning voltage is used for uh, tune the in the transmit path amplifier. We can see. I hope it's it's good enough to to see it. We have here one, two, three capacitive diodes in the mixer unit and this voltage here VCV is controlled by this pot and this pot is the pot on the front panel 
and here we have the switch over receive transmit this is a band switch and then there is the tuning voltage controlled by these resistors in case of transmit in case of receive for each megahertz band so when i go from one megahertz band to the other then there's another uh, trim resistor installed or used and this shifts up the tuning voltage for this pot so that the dot 500 the center frequency is always uh, correctly aligned and then, the, then there's a fine tuning possible from 0, 0 to 1000 and this is done with these band switches these pots and the trim pot on the front by the way the same voltage is used for uh, tuning the receive path and uh, to adapt it to the different characteristics of diodes of the cap diodes in the receive and transmit path there's a switch over with a relay and then we have different uh, trim resistors to be aligned in case of transmit and in case of receive so but at the moment we are in transmit mode band is set to 144 frequency is set to 500 centered the drive control here is set to 500 you can see it uh, yes this drive control is set to center to 500 and now the uh, manual states that some cores and uh, trim, trim caps have to be adjusted for maximum output in the frequency of 144.500 first step is again T4 of the heterodyne unit I go to transmit with a little bit more than 14 watt this core has to be aligned for maximum it was already maximum so we have no problem and t1 through t6 we have now uh, prepared the cores they are moving free and i have to adjust them for maximum output core by core and to repeat it because they are a little bit interacting so I can start with this one this core is okay this one one and now I make a first counter check that this uh, drive setting is indeed in the center I'm on 500 and when I tune misalign this knob okay I think we are centered I will repeat it several times but in general we are on the right way now There is also a trim cap PC1 which has to be aligned for maximum. I did it. It's a little bit touchy. But as we can see, we are in the maximum. And now again to check. We are here in the center, which is the maximum. Okay. I can't do it better, but it doesn't matter. We have approximately 20 watt output nominal is 10 watt how much is the current oh 3.8 amp at 13.8 volt 3.8 amp oh, okay nice and now set band switch to 140 uh, it was 145 sorry i made a mistake 144 but i think that's not not relevant Yes, it's okay. Yes, it is centered. 
and now one on the 45 there are two trim resistors on the bottom side i have to bring it up in the vertical position these two trim resistors are here shown it is on the generator unit there are two resistors i will show it we see here two two trim resistors one is here and the other one is under this harness the location is like this vr10 and vr12 was not shown here on this diagram but it is here so first we have to align vr10 for maximum power and now repeat the setting to reverse and we have to adjust the VR12 which is under this harness I hope I can get access to it also for maximum output power well, first I have to look for the for an access No big difference as I see or do I something wrong? It moves, it turns. Minimum effect. I didn't really find an, an absolute maximum here. It is very, a very tiny effect. But when I turn the drive setting, okay. We are in the maximum, it is 18 watt or so, sufficient. I think this effect is not so big uh, of these uh, capacitive diodes and this is a little bit of a strange technology from the days where the uh, big shortwave transceivers had such a drive tuning drive and pre-selector tuning and the designers of this transceiver were fixed in the idea that they needed also for the VHF transceiver uh, later versions of this transceiver the TS770 which also includes the UFA UHF frequency version does not have such a tuning so it is a little bit uh, an anachronism today but it is there and it should be aligned correctly and now I can uh, align the rest of the uh, driver unit there are still some capacitors which have to be aligned these three caps trim caps are here and I, I didn't find any improvement they have been aligned properly to maximum output power so I think I'll leave it when I go to 144 a little bit more power okay this one also well this part is also done the adjustment of the final unit PA is done with these four trim caps one two three four and some realignment of the last two trim caps in the driver or mixer stage but I've seen they are still in the maximum I'll start with this one can improve I'm operating at 144.500 I want to have the maximum output power in the SSB range not in the FM band but I cannot really improve it it is best output power it is 20 watts and now we have 4 amp power consumption 
at 13.8 volt, 4 amp. Oh god, a lot of input power. <coughs> well, this is done. The final unit. And then I have to adjust the VR2 of mixer unit, the ALC, to reduce the output power to 12 volt, uh, 12 watt. Again, this is this pot. We have here the VR2. And you remember, during the adjustment of the generator unit, we have taken this to minimum ALC action. So no ALC is given, and now we can reduce the output power with this trim pot. Full scale is 20 watts, and I will try to reduce it now. And where is transmit? Here is transmit. Ah, ah, approximately 12 watt. And when I switch between the brains 144, 145. And the paradox is now that the drive control has no influence, or nearly no influence because the ALC does its job. So the current uh, is reduced to 3.3 amp at 13 volt. It is 40 watts or so, 40 watt input for, for 14 output. Okay, it's an acceptable value. There are a lot of uh, amplifier stages and mixer stages and counter units, which also have a rather high current consumption. This transceiver is not designed to save energy. Step 12 is the check of the AM output. I'm in the mode AM. And uh, the AM carrier control, this is a pot here, which is behind the cover. And with the AM carrier, I can align to full power, 13, more than 10 watt, okay. And now I can reduce it down to, as I said, to 3 watt or so. And that's okay. We have to reduce this because the mode AM increases the output um, voltage and power by the factor of 4. Because when we have a modulation, the carrier has only half voltage. That means a quarter of power. And when we have full modulation, 100% modulation, then we have <coughs> in the peak double output voltage, that means four time power. And so we have a three watts set, this is okay. And this is a quarter of the 12 watt. Well, this is also done. Now to step 13, adjustment of RF power and low power setting, mode FM. Maximum output power, okay, and then the I think I will flip it around the chassis by 90 degrees. By the way, it's important to use the correct uh, PCB layout. This is a version TS700 SP with a new uh, RX noise blanker board. So it has a little bit of different layout, but the pot, the VR3, is still there, or it is at the corner on the board. And with this uh, trim pot, it's set to, to set the RF power indication at full watt output, full output, to a reading of eight or so. And I set it. Oops, should I clean this pot? Ah, I'm causing a short circuit here, not good. This pot is in a vertical upright position and when I squeeze it too hard, it gets in contact with a, with a pin. Not so nice. It is set to 8, 10. No, not to the S meter for the reception, it's to set to 8. maximum output power. 
and now in low power setting the output power should be limited to 1.5 watt or so with a 2 watt there's a trim pot on the board where the switch is it's uh, not so easy to find it to adjust it to get access to it what am i doing wrong sorry Ah, now I got it. Okay, we set it to 2 watt or so. I'm not sure how accurate this meter is. I will do it, uh, the final adjustment of the output power with my Yule Packard power meter. I don't use this one, it's only for indication. It's not a very precise instrument. But we can see here low position and high position. Okay, this meter here is a joke. This is 2 watt. I can't be. What is going on there? Okay. Step 14. Adjustment of carrier suppression in the mode SSB. It is proposed to use a field strength meter or a power meter or something like this with directional couplers. Uh, it's all much too complicated. The, today the, the first choice is a, a simply a spectrum analyzer to use this one and to see how big the carrier is. <coughs> Just for reference, I'm in the mode FM. I use here an attenuator, 20 dB dummy load. And the top line is 30 dBm, so we have here a level of 50 dBm, that's 100 Watt. And we are approximately 10 dB down, a little bit less. It's 8 dB down, so we have a, a power of 12 Watt. What we measured with the, with the simple power meter, that's okay. And now I go to mode USB, as stated. The microphone gain has to be set to maximum. There is the knob, this one. And then Okay, we have the carrier. I will show it in the a little bit better. We're gonna switch to LSB. Ah, sorry, it's AM. This is LSB and this is USB. Uh -huh. There's a difference between LSB and USB, shouldn't be. The chosen mode is USB in, uh, in VHF, so I have to look for the alignment in USB. And now I'm aligning VR6 for best carrier balance. Oop. I should carefully read the whole procedure and there's a trim capacitor also, of course so-called TC1, which is a little bit more right. Where is it? This one. have to mis misalign the one and then try to realign this one whether it gets better no and it was the wrong direction align it better. It's a tricky thing. And now I'm on the right way. I have to de-align the trim cap a little bit and then I can improve it with the resistor. Ah, here we are. Aha, that's it.
when you don't have a chance to optimize it with the two with the resistor and the, the capacitor then misalign one of the components I see it's best to do it with the capacitor Just for reference, what is LSB? Ah, no. Now we are on the right way. Haha. <laughs> oh, there was zero. That didn't. Okay. And the suppression should be more than 40 dB. The maximum power is here. 10, 20, 30, 40. We have approximately 50 dB carrier suppression, so that's okay now. But you see, it's a little bit a touchy thing. When we have two components, and if it doesn't help, then I can re or, or misalign one of the components and try then to compensate it with the other. Then you have uh, most probably. Uh, success. Step 15 adjustment of AM modulation. The channel is set to channel 11. Empty channels are no heterodyne oscillation. We need an audio signal of 2 millivolt at 1.5 kilohertz. That's the output we have here. It's set a little bit to more than 2 millivolt because the generator here has an impedance of 200 ohms and the input impedance in the microphone connection we have here is approximately 600 ohms or so so we need a approximately one third more 2 millivolt one third more is 2.7 millivolt that's what we have 2 millivolt 3 millivolt it's rather exact and the AMM terminal we have connected the AF uh, millivolt meter it's a probe one by one and the output voltage should be 250 millivolt there's a trim pot that's original setting a little bit wrong but it's not not uh, decisive i measured the input it's two millivolt here if that's if that's okay that's accurate and this trim pot has to be set 2.5 uh, 250 now we have 250 millivolt full scale is 300 that's okay so the air modulation is set we have here the setup for the FM modulation setting step 16 I connected my deviation meter to the output it's the RF input here via the uh, 20 dB attenuator mode is FM low power the scope is connected to the output of the microphone amplifier and here we see the limitation the clipping on both sides which prevents over modulation and it is written here that uh, we have to set the pot uh, for 5 kilohertz deviation internal trim pot which is behind this uh, limited signal I'm driving the input uh, signal a little bit higher increase it per factor of 3 now we have 4.6 is there any big difference? no 4.6 and I increase the trim pot to 5 kilohertz deviation that is here and then the input signal NF signal input signal has to be reduced to approximately 2 millivolt and then the microphone gain potential meter the, this pot has to be reduced down to 3.5 kilohertz deviation at 1 kilohertz sorry I've forgotten it when we reduce the frequency we see the uh, deviation also is a little bit reduced when we go down to 1000 And then I reduce the, the pot here, the deviation to 3.5 kilohertz. That's it. 
this for two millivolt input signal and here we can see behind the limiter there is no limitation we have a clear sine wave what is required in the audio which comes out of the speaker from the demodulator is also okay well that's it and now i skip uh, one or two steps because i already connected the fm deviation so i adjust the i don't have a tone burst unit but we have here the tone call unit for the w type only it's 1750 hertz and we have uh, no burst circuit in it as long as we press tone we have the output but i have to remove the signal from the signal generator the setup is a little bit rearranged i disconnected the audio generator the scope is still connected to the output of the modulation setting here i can measure the deviation and when i go to tone sorry this was the wrong one i've forgotten for the compensation this is 1750 hertz we can measure the frequency the tone call is okay deviation 3 kilohertz could be a little bit increased i have to check vr2 is here directly on top of the rf board and when i squeeze tone i can adjust it to three kilohertz deviation that's also okay checking the vox operation first has to be checked in mode cw connect the key and then we should check that the side tone is generated i'm in mode cw I mean, when the AF is set to a higher level then we can hear the side tone that's okay and now we should go to USB mode USB we apply again a signal of 2 millivolt 1.5 kilohertz check that the TS700S is switched to the transmit mode ah ok I have no input signal Clack, that's it now and without input we see transmit and the delay can be set with this knob when I switch on ok a little bit longer Hmm. That's maximum delay. That's minimum delay. Ah, that's minimum, sorry. No big difference between maximum and minimum. But in general it works and I go to off with the box. That's also checked and okay. Checking touch tone operation cannot be done we have no touch tone the panel is not connected we don't have it here tone burst we talked about it we don't have a tone burst we have the tone call unit it is checked 1750 hertz and now we can go to the receiving section and now we are at the end of part six of the videos about the Kenwood TS 700 S line and I can promise you more much more alignment will come there's a lot of work anyhow stay tuned stay healthy see you on this channel